Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com. We've got a really fun one today. You are going to learn how to rig and animate a walk cycle on a simple cartoon character. All right, so this is what we're gonna be making today. We're gonna be animating a little lemon guy here because when life hands you lemons, you throw a cutesy little face on it and give it a walk cycle, right? So uh, this is uh, what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna show you how I uh, use Splat IK for the arms and the legs, set that up, and then uh, just animating all the uh, different aspects to create our happy jolly walking lemon. It'll be easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I'm sorry, the lemon puns are just gonna be coming out in full force in this tutorial. So I apologize in advance. So here we go. Here's our lemon and he's got a little bit of an issue because he's got one arm and one leg. And uh, this is just because we're gonna set up the, uh, this is the right, yeah, right side of our lemon first and then use some of the character tools in Cinema 4D to basically just duplicate and mirror it. So you only have to set it up for one side basically. So let's start by adding uh, some spline IK to the arm and the leg. So my arm is basically a capsule. My leg is basically a glorified capsule with a little nubby at the bottom for his little tootsie. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, so what we're going to do is, I like to call this technique of Splana IK kind of like using the puppet tool in After Effects. So you basically set points where you want the tension to be, uh, like a, a little point for bending around the knee, and then like a pivot point uh, at the hip and the foot, and same thing for the arm. So like the shoulder, the elbow, and the, the hand or the little nub on our guy here. So uh, that's that's kind of how I like to explain it. So we're going to use Spline IK, and I go through Spline IK and, and all that stuff in depth in an, uh, another tutorial that I'm going to link to it, that if you want to learn more about Spline IK and just IK in general, definitely check that out. So I'm going to just go through Spline IK. First you need a spline, hence the name. And what we're going to do is basically just like you would with your puppet tool, is basically have like a tension point for the shoulder, a bendy point for the elbow, and then a tension point for the hand, right? So there's our spline, and this will be our uh, right arm spline. And basically what I wanna do now is just go and select all these points and make sure they're all on the same Y plane. So I'm just going to zero out the size and the Y. So they're just straight like that. And then I just need to make sure that I have this all lined up. Uh, and you'll notice that once I went to my object mode, my anchor point went to zero, zero, zero. And one handy little shortcut I have up here is the center axis two. And what that's going to do is actually center the axis to the bounding box of your object or their spline. So I have this docked and it's a very, uh, I use this a ton, so it's always helpful to just kind of put all your uh, most frequently used uh, buttons up here. So I have a few up here. So I'm just gonna hit the center axis too. You can see that's now centered on my spline. And then I can just move this forward. Let's go to, uh, let's go to a four view for now. Whoop, let's go to four views, there we go. And just wanna make sure, let's go to our top view here. Just wanna make sure that we are positioning everything correctly, so this is kind of important. So that's all lined up, that looks all nice and good in all of our views here. And uh, now, uh, let's actually add some Spline IK to this. Uh, but first, the, th the first thing I want to do is actually uh, to actually get the spline to move our geometry. We're going to introduce a little uh, spline wrap. So we'll just make that a child of our right arm. And we're just going to use this spline, this right arm spline, to control and move our uh, arm. So let's go ahead and to add IK to this. So when we move the uh, point here on the tip of the arm, it actually moves the rest of the arm and then the, the elbow bends and all that good stuff. We're gonna add 
some spline IK. But the first thing we need to do before we add spline IK is when you're using IK, you kind of want to give your uh, the Cinema 4D IK system a little bit of a hint as to what direction your uh, elbow is going to point to. So right now everything's straight, so it's just going to guess which direction you want the elbow to point to. So what we're going to do is just give it a little hint and say, hey, uh, hey, Mr. Cinema 4D IK system, we want the elbow to actually point this away. So facing the Z. So what we're going to do is just give it a little bit of a hint by just nudging that elbow point just a little bit back. So you can see it's a little bit cr like cr crinked, right? I don't know what word I'm trying to figure out here. Just a little bit bent. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I want to say crinkled. Uh, just a little bit bent right there. So that gives it our IK system a hint as to what direction we want the elbow to point to. So backwards. So what we're going to do to add IK is right click, go into the character tags here, and go to IK. Not IK spline, but IK. And what we're going to see is that there's this uh, point IK system, and this is the key. And when you activate the point IK system and when you apply the IK tag to a spline, what you're going to uh, need to do then is define where your spline starts and ends. How many points does it have? So right now our spline has three points, but how this uh, point system works is that the number actually starts at zero, not one. So we have point zero, point one, and point two. So our point system, our point IK will start at point zero, that's our shoulder, and will end at point two. And you can see that we now have this green collect, uh, connecting line here, and that's pretty much what we want. And now all we have to do is say, uh, okay, now let's create a goal, which is basically a null I'm just going to make that really, really quick, is basically a null that controls where your hand is. And you can see once I move this around, you can see, hey, there's my elbow. It's pointing the uh, correct direction, so that's awesome. But you can see now we have like a little arm. And now he's waving to you. He's having a good old time. Uh, so this is working perfectly. So what we're going to do is just kind of move this back in place here. And uh, the one thing I want to go over is let's just rename this uh, right arm goal so we know that's our goal uh, and what I want to do is you can see that and this is all your personal preference but this elbow is fairly sharp uh, and another thing that we probably need to do is up the height segments so we don't have any crinkling so now we have I'm using the phrase crinkling I don't know why any uh, kind of jagginess in our spline or our, our little elbow there because we don't have much interpolation in this spline point, so it's going to have a sharp point. So what we can do to soften that out is actually change the uh, point interpolation from Bezier to, say, like B-spline. You see we have like more of a noodley kind of thing with uh, way more of a curve. Uh, we also have, if I just bend this and just go through all these different uh, types here, we got Akima, which is a way bigger arc and then uh, cubic, which is a little bit tighter arc. So it's all your personal preference. I like the beast line. Uh, I don't know why. I just like it a little bit less curvy, a lot more macaroni-ish. Uh, so now we got our arm, and it's uh, pointing the right direction, all, all got good stuff. So that would be our arm swinging with the walk cycle, and that looks good. So now, with that all set up, uh, just one more thing I want to do before I actually duplicate this and create our uh, left arm setup, and that is to be able to easily uh, select the goal in our viewport. I'm going to change the display from dot to circle and then just increase the radius here. So the great thing about that is when it comes to animating and doing the walk cycle and all this stuff, I don't have to go into my object manager here to grab the goal. I can just go into my viewport and grab that little bounding uh, display circle for my null and then just start animating and keyframing right there. So that's a nice little useful tip. Uh, so now I got my arm group, my arm geometry, it's with the spline wrap. We can actually hide the spline wrap here so we don't see it. And let's actually go into our filter and say, I don't wanna see uh, deformers, which that's actually off. 
I don't know why I still see the deformer. So let's uh, let's see what's going on. Let's just turn that off. There we go. Had a little lag in the viewport, I think. So we don't see that. Uh, and now we can just collect all this stuff together, the spline, the goal, drag this all under one null. So this is our right arm group. Everything's named. That's very important. We have R for right. And uh, with the null selected of the, the topmost parented null, I'm just going to go into the character uh, menu and use the mirror tool. And what the mirror tool does, it's very aptly named, it basically just mirrors your setup and it's used specifically for like right and left legs, uh, you know, all uh, right and left arms, all that good stuff. So uh, the only thing we're really going to touch in this mirror tool is this naming tool, which is really, really handy because what you can do is replace letters with other letters or words with other words. So it's going to search through our object hierarchy and the names of all of our objects. And if we say uh, replace R space, because if we didn't have that space, it would actually try to look at every R. So it would replace these R's in arm as well, so or, or the R in wrap, and we don't want that. So we're going to do R space, and we're going to replace it with L space. And then what that's going to do is look for all the R's followed by a space and replace them with L in a space. So now what we can do is just go to the mirror tool, and two things are going to happen. Number one, you can see, hey, it's not our lemon's not gimpy anymore. It has its uh, left arm, and uh, we also have our left arm group, and it's all renamed from R's to L. So perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And let's just double check to make sure our arm is working the way it should. Yep, looking good. Looking good, Lemon. Now we just need to work on that leg issue. Now you're, you're like a pirate, Lemon. Uh, let's give you another leg. So uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's go and close these up. And uh, we want that to be a part of the main lemon group right there. And let's work on that leg problem, that gimpy leg problem. So we're going to go into our four up view. And same thing like we did with the arms. We're going to create a spline for uh, our leg. So let's just go in here, create a point. Let me delete that. I had a, my leg selected. I'm just going to select a point, uh, create a point right by its torso, uh, one right at the knee, right there, and then one at the foot, right at the bottom of the foot right there. And let's just make sure it's positioned correctly, and of course it's not. Uh, so what we're going to do again is just center axis to push this in uh, place, and make sure that we are all set there. And we'll rename this, uh, this is the right leg spline. Splin, spline, there we go. And uh, again, we want to make sure that this is all lined up in Z, except for the knee. Again, we want to give the IK system a little bit of an idea of what we want the elbow or the uh, knee to point to. So we want it to point forward like a normal human being or Norman, normal uh, happy lemon character with arms and legs. And we want that to point forward. So we'll just push that uh, forward a little bit. And uh, now we can do the same thing and create a spline wrap. So we'll get a spline wrap, make a child of our right leg, bring our right leg spline boop, right in there. And you're going to notice that we got some uh, weirdness going on here. And that is because we need to change the axis uh, of orientation of how our object is uh, facing. So I think it's a negative Y that'll fix it. So now we got it working good. But now it looks like he was in an unfortunate skiing accident and broke his ankle. It's facing the wrong direction. So all we need to do is we can either uh, rotate this the correct direction, or we can change the up vector to uh, a positive one in the X, and that'll straighten everything out. Uh, and now we can actually go and apply our uh, uh, spline IK. So again, we're going to turn on point IK. And same thing, we got three points uh, in our spline. So it's going to start at uh, point zero and end at point two. And we got that green line again. And let me actually just turn off my spline wrap there so we can more clearly see. We've got the green. 
And uh, if everything works correctly, all we got to do is add a goal and we'll just rename that null uh, right leg goal. And let's just move this around and see if everything's working as it should. And it is cool. So again, uh, we have a really pointy uh, elbow or not elbow knee. <laughs> And uh, that's all well and good if you want to do that, or if you want to have more of a curved uh, spline, we can do that as well by, again, changing it from Bezier to B-spline. And now it's a little bit more cartoony uh, and a lot more macaroni-y. Sure. Uh, so it's all, again, all your preference, how you want that to bend, what your point interpolation is going to be. Uh, but there we go. And again, we can go into our display and change this to circle increase the radius so now we can just be in our viewport here and just select this and you can do a little one-legged tap dance uh, but let's have him be able to do a two-legged tap dance like a normal lemon guy and uh, let's go ahead and do 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 let's collect all of our left leg our right leg it's right leg his right leg uh, elements so the the goal the spline the uh, the leg geometry with the spline wrap, and we got that all in one group. And again, we have everything named uh, correctly with the R and the space. So then all we have to do again is go to the mirror tool. And again, uh, this is already saved from the last time we edited this, so everything should be fine. So we'll just go and do mirror, and that looks good. And if we select the left leg goal and move this around, sweet, everything's point in the right direction and now I can do tap dance with both legs great so that is basically it for prepping uh, the the IK for everything before we start animating uh, the one last thing I want to do is uh, everything is going to be in our lemon uh, main group here so we can move everything around except for the one thing I want to take out from this hierarchy are these leg goals and the reason for that is because now I can actually move this whole lemon group and those legs will stay planted for the most part to the floor. And that's kind of important when you're doing walk cycles. So that's pretty much it for set up for the IK. And now we can kind of, we can get ready to animate and give this, take this guy for a walk.